Collinwood, October 21st, 2021. A red glow engulfs the west wing of the great estate on this warm October evening. Tonight, two enthusiastic travelers, Danielle and Meredith, will gaze upon this stone sentinel for the first time, realizing a lifelong dream. Turn around and open your eyes, virgins. And that was the virgin ceremony that my friend Meredith and I underwent when we had the opportunity to spend two nights at Seaview Terrace, the Cary Mansion, the famed house used as the exterior of Collinwood on Dark Shadows. When we turned around, the tower was illuminated with a strange light, while a hellish red glow emanated from the windows of the West Wing. I had seen the outside of the mansion many times over the years, uh, even taping part of a Shilling Shockers Halloween special uh, surreptitiously, I might add, on the uh, lawn back in 2006. However, this was my first time seeing the inside of the house, and actually the first time staying in this massive edifice. And that's all thanks to Bob Issel, who invited me to join this amazing fan gathering. We'll be hearing from Bob and several other fans who help organize and decorate the house. And while I was unable to stay for the Halloween gathering over the weekend, I I am glad that I was able to go earlier and spend a couple of nights with the crew, you know, that puts this together and helps decorate the house and really get to sit down and spend time with fans whose names I've known for years through the fanzines uh, that I've ordered stuff from. I've always been a little bit quiet in terms of my involvement uh, in the fandom, but uh, over the years I've become much more, uh, I guess, outgoing and and approaching uh, people. Uh, So I I'm happy that I got the chance to to really get the uh, the time to spend uh, with everyone who was at the house, uh, including those who were not interviewed for this episode. So thank you to everyone there. And without further ado, let's enter the haunted halls of Collinwood. It is about a week before Halloween, and. I am with one of the greatest stars of Dark Shadows. No, not with. In one of the greatest stars from Dark Shadows, I am in Collinwood. Right now, Seaview Terrace, the Carrie Mansion, to explore and examine the terror at Collinwood. did run into someone who I am super excited to talk to. He is a legendary figure in the Dark Shadows fandom. I've seen his name over the many years uh, subscribing to the fanzines, and he I've bought some really cool uh, merchandise from him. He always uh, releases the coolest items, and he is the head honcho here uh, in putting together these events for fans at Collinwood. Uh, I am honored to talk to Bob Issel. Bob, how are you doing today? Good, Danielle. Nice to be with you. Thank you so much for having me here uh, this weekend. And my friend Meredith, we're really having a great time here. So thank you. It's my pleasure. (laughs) Bob, um, you've been involved in the fandom for uh, quite a while. So what was your introduction to uh, Dark Shadows and then also getting involved with the fandom as well? Well, like many of uh, the people here, I ran home from school in the 1960s to watch the show. I'd watch it with my mom uh, when the show went off the air in 71. I really didn't give it much thought over the next 20 years until the new Dark Shadows came out. And uh, that's when I rediscovered the show. Wonderful. And how did you get involved in the Dark Shadows fandom? Like you've... Over over the years, I've gotten some really interesting things from you, like the Ron Barry interviews and uh, the Grayson Hall interview and uh, uh, Dumb Shadows, I think, that Ron, Dumb Shadows, like all kinds of fun stuff. Is that your passion, is finding these like exciting things? Is that Was that kind of your gateway into the fandom? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the day that I discovered uh, 
I rediscovered Dark Shadows. I was in a blockbuster video with a girl that I was dating at the time who was a little bit younger than I, and she wasn't really familiar with Dark Shadows. I had educated her on the show, and we'd been there just to rent the movie, and she was on the other end of the store, and I heard her yell, hey, Bob, here's that Dark Shadows over here. And I was like, what? And I walked over, and I saw the resurrection of Barnabas Collins, and uh, we grabbed that. That's what we watched that night. And, of course, at the end of those VHS tapes was information to write for uh, fan club uh, in Maplewood, New Jersey. So I, I sent away for that and found out about the festivals that way. And with regard to these events uh, that you put on here at uh, at Seaview Terrace, Cary Mansion, Collinwood, how did that come about? Like, how what was how did that even happen? I mean, it's this is a, a privately owned house, and yet these events take place for for fans, and it's such a really cool thing. So how how did this transpire? Yeah, so following the 1993 festival at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, Guy Haynes, Holland Samaras, and several others were going up to Newport to see the house. And they asked me if I wanted to come along, and I said, absolutely. So we got up to the house, and Guy, Helen, Walter Down, and uh, Connie Jonas were all members of the Collinsport Players at the time, and they brought along period costumes. They wanted to shoot some scenes for a for a future skit. While we were on the property, a uh, guy noticed a woman coming down to greet us, and it was Mrs. Carey. And uh, in the span of five minutes, we got her from kicking us off the property to uh, inviting us into the house and showing us around. And we met her, her husband and her daughter, Denise, at the time as well. Wonderful. And when you met them, uh, how did you propose this idea of having these uh, fan get-togethers? Well, at first, there was nothing There was nothing done in 93. The Carries were actually going back to New York that day, and we helped them load up their car. And Mrs. Carey and I exchanged information. I had asked her if I could bring some fans up again. She said, absolutely. So two years later, in 1995, I brought a group up following the uh, Dark Shadows Festival again held at the Marriott Marquis. And uh, Mr. Carey and Mrs. Carey gave my group uh, an extensive tour of the house. And they held, they have a wing of the house that they held for themselves that they would vacation here in the summer. So over the next 14 years from 1995 to 2009, Mrs. Carey arranged with the security at Selve Regina College, because the house was still being used at that time as a dormitory, that whenever I wanted to bring a group up, all I had to do was call there and make arrangements with them. And we would come up, sometimes we'd be allowed in certain sections of the house, and sometimes we would not. We would just be come up and roam around. We were allowed to roam around the grounds. But if the carriers were here, then we were guaranteed to be allowed in the house. And then in 2009, the family ended their relationship with the college. And as we had talked off camera, I mean off microphone yesterday, over the years when the carriers were here, I had talked to Mr. Carey about possibly doing an event in the house at some point, and that was never going to be possible while the college was here for legal reasons. So I broached that subject with him in 2009, August of 2009, and he said, you could put something together that fast. I was talking about doing a Halloween party, and I said, yeah, and you know, what am I going to say? No, of course I'm going to say yes. Yes, I could do it. And he said, all right, you'll work with my daughter, Denise. And, and I did, and uh, initially we were going to only have 20 people here. But, of course, as you can imagine, there's a lot of interest in staying here. So in September of 2009, Denise and I were on the phone, and she asked me how the party planning was going. And I said, well, I, I feel like the captain of the Titanic telling this person they can get on the boat and this one they can't. And she was sympathetic and said, well, what can I do? I, and I said, well, it'd be nice if we can you know, increase the numbers slightly. 25 or 30, and uh, that year we had 32 people. Uh, it was very successful. Mr. and Mrs. Carey, Denise, and Denise's then fiance, Chris, were all with us. And uh, Mr. Carey told our group that we brought a warmth and love to the house that had been severely lacking, which was very, uh, very poignant, very profound. And, and we just were very touched by that as they were by us being there. So following the 2009 Halloween party, I stayed back and uh, spent a few days here. Denise and I went out for lunch and talked about doing future gatherings here. And 
Uh, the initial party was everybody would stay one night. Actually, we had some people stay two or three nights to help set up for that that inaugural 2009 Halloween party. And uh, we were back in, for Memorial Day 2010. Then we did Halloween 2010. And it just uh, was a springboard for, for more parties to follow. And we've had parties in the house every year since 2009, with the exception of 2020 because of COVID. Now, is, uh, as we know, uh, the house is currently up for, for sale, uh, which is, you know, it would be heartbreaking to imagine that this wouldn't continue. Is there uh, any sort of hope for that or any thoughts on what you would like to see happen? Well, I'll echo what Helen Samaras said to you yesterday. Uh, I, I want what's best for the house. Sure, um, we would miss being here if, if it was to come about. But uh, we all love this house, and we only want what's best for the house. So, yeah, it would be a melancholy feeling if they did sell. But uh, we've, we've had a great time here. As I was talking with you yesterday, again, off microphone, I showed you all the different uh, slideshows from the past parties, and we have many, many memories. Jimmy Hutchison and myself were sitting outside earlier today just reflecting back on all that. Uh, and it's, it's great. It's great memories. and. I'm just uh, very thankful to the Carey family for allowing us to do what we've been doing for the last 12 years. Well, hopefully it'll continue in some fashion. It would be nice if they kind of helped to some, restore the house in some way, the, you know, repair some of the things that need repair, but to also maintain that presence of, of that warmth you mentioned and that uh, camaraderie that kind of where people come together every year, all unified by their passion for dark shadows, but also their friendship that's developed over the years. And that's very evident. So I hope that happens as well. Yeah. You know, and Daniel, you know, what's really important is the last Dark Shadows Festival was 2016, and there's been a couple small peripheral events since. So there's really no annual event where fans can congregate and get together. So that's another um, major aspect of these parties. It gives at least a small group, group of us a place to, to gather and fellowship with one another. So we have talked if, 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 these, if and when, these because nothing lasts forever, if and when these parties come to an end, you know, we still plan to get together. Or we'll look at different locations. There are some of the actors who are still very interested in participating in fan activities. This weekend, we will have Catherine Lee Scott here, Halloween, which is very cool. In the past, we've had Marie Wallace here. We've had Sharon Smith. And uh, they've, they've all enjoyed their time here at Collinwood with us. And uh, Mary O'Leary is doing her screening of the Jonathan Frith documentary as well, which is great. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Mary is so nice and, and just a super professional. So we will be rescreening the entire documentary next Thursday, October 28th. And uh, then we'll have a panel left afterwards with Mary, Helen Samaras, and Steve Randizzi. Uh, Helen was very close to Jonathan, so she has a lot of great information to share. And uh, Steve was an early host of some of the festival uh, Q&As. Uh, so it should really be a fun evening. Now, speaking of uh, fun, uh, there is something else. Uh, you are well known for producing uh, really exciting and fun Dark Shadows merchandise. In the past, you were just showing me the uh, Barnabas t-shirt that was uh, reproduced from the Barnabas costume, the, the apron for the... The, yes. the Ben Cooper costume, and it glows in the dark, and uh, you did a reproduction of the Barnabas watch, and you were telling me about the Ode to Angelique music box you made, and so many exciting things, and now you have this book, uh, this new book that many fans have contributed to. It's called Our Shadowed Past, and it is this gorgeous, thick book that's filled with fan memories. It has actor memories in it. So many contributors, so I'm honored to have also contributed to, to the book. Talk about our shadowed past. Yeah, I'm super, super excited about the book. As I was telling you yesterday, again, off microphone, uh, initially, this is a project that was thought about. We've talked about this, my, my dark, fellow Dark Shadows friends and myself for years. It, we thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a book that talks about everybody's memories of when they first started watching Dark Shadows? And Guy had the great idea of, yeah, and, and we, they should have a picture of what they, what, how, what they were, what age they were. 
a, a photo of them then and then a photo now. Well, it's nobody, nobody ever pursued that. And, you know, I, I decided this past summer that I was going to take the bull by the horns or as I told my dark shadows friends, the bat by the wings and run with this. And initially, you know, I just had the idea, I'll get together a handful. I mean, I have quite a few people that attend my gatherings, and I reached out to that email list, as well as some some Facebook pages. And uh, I thought, you know, if I get 50 to 75 contributors, I'll have a book, uh, you know, maybe 150 to 200 pages. That would be pretty cool. As it turned out, I've got, counting the actors, I have 145 contributors, and you can see the book, it's 320 pages. It's full color, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, as I was telling you earlier, from concept to page, I couldn't have asked for it to turn out better. And I have to give kudos to my uh, great friend, Stephen Mark Rainey, who, oh, great. who yeah. he himself is a prolific horror writer. Yeah. He wrote Dreams of the Dark back in 1999, an mm -hmm. official Dark Shadows book along with Elizabeth Massey. And then he's also written some of the audio dramas. Mm -hmm. Mark reached out to me and said, hey, Bob, you know, I'd like to help you with the book and help. I, I, the book would have never turned out as well as it did without having Mark on board because he took my ideas and my rudimentary drawings and turned them into reality. Uh, and also, I have to give a big shout out to Jeff Kenny. Jeff is a good friend of mine from Chicago who restored many of the photos that are inside this book. As you can imagine, 50 to 60 year old photos aren't aren't the quality that they are today. And Jeff was able to, to do that. He was able to, you know, take some of these photos and really do a nice job with them. Um, actor wise, I had Marie Wallace, who wrote the foreword for the book. Inside, we have David Selby, Laura Parker, Sharon Smith, Jim Storm, Catherine Lee Scott, all sharing memories of their time at the studio with the kids. And I broke the book up into, th into three sections. It's the actors, it's the fans, like myself and you, and then there's the studio kids. And what I mean by studio kids are those kids that were we're fortunate enough to be able to hang out at the ABC studio during the day and see the actors and interact with them, uh, which is such a, a, a cool thing. So I got several of them on board. Uh, Elena Nat Canther, Walter Miller, Richie Leventino, Jay Nass, Paulette Nordman, Jeanette Morowski, Dee Kearney, and Kath Hedorowicz, who is Marie's fan club president. They, their contributions just added so much to this book, uh, both their writing and the photos they sent me. They sent me some photos. I've been in fandom, like I said, since 1991, 30 years. There are so many photos inside this book that I'd never seen that they shared with me for this project. And again, without their contributions, this book wouldn't be what it is today. And I'm so thankful to all of them. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it really uh, it, it exceeded my expectations and i'm just i'm very proud of it and uh, i think it's something that's that needed to be done i was having a conversation out on the uh, terrace this morning with jimmy hutchinson and you know I, I wish myself or somebody would have done this book five or ten years ago because we could have included a john carlin and you know robert rodan and and so many of the others that chris pennock so many of the others that that we've lost but jimmy's like bob everything happens in its own time and it was meant to happen now. Now there are. This is a very limited uh, edition book. Uh, I know those. You know, there were, you had pre-orders going for a little while. Uh, do you think you'll have copies that you'll be offering, or is this kind of a one and done? Do you plan to reprint it at all? Or? Well, that would depend on interest from the fans. Um, I believe I told you uh, the initial print run was not a, a large print run. I self-published, so every you know I, I went out of pocket for it, but. It's amazing because people are ordering, th people that have contributed, like yourself, several of them are, are ordering multiple co copies, anywhere from two up to seven or eight copies, because they want to share it with their family members. Uh, because it's like I, in my initial email and the Facebook pages, and I want to shout out to uh, the people that manage those Facebook pages, Jeff Kenny with the Dark Shadows Collectors, 
Larry Hardwick, Dark Shadows Appreciation Society. Dan Silvio has um, Shadows of the Night. Shadows yeah, of, I oh, knew it. Fans, yeah. yeah, and Dan, longtime fan. He's done so much for, for fandom. Yes. And uh, Elena also put a big note on her page for me. And I know Paulette Nordman reached out to a lot of people to get them to contribute. Guy Haynes was a big ambassador for the book by reaching out to uh, several people to contribute. And I mean, I've got, I've got, uh, you know, Dark Shadows fandom. I want a big shout out to uh, Kathy Rush and Marcy Robbins, two of the, oh, yeah. oh, I mean, they, they are two of the people that are responsible for Dark Shadows fandom reaching the point it has. And they both have extensive, very, very great and interesting chapters in this book. So I'm forever thankful to them and, you know, the other committee members that contributed, Christy Nelson, Nina Ogle. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great read. And the, the stories really are, everybody's got something unique about Dark Shadows in their life. And uh, yeah, so getting back to, well, there is a possibility I would do a second printing if there was enough interest. I will, I do anticipate to have extra copies after I've taken care of all my pre-orders. Check on the groups, I, I would say, right? Yeah. The Facebook groups? Probably those face groups. Facebook groups I mentioned, Dark Shadows Collectors, Dark Shadows Appreciation Society. Larry's been really good about putting stuff up for me there. And like I said, Dan on the Shadows of the Night group, uh, Elena. I'm sure I'm sure people will be like yourself. I'm sure you'll be posting something on your oh, yeah. page. And if I see there's enough interest and I run out of books, I will definitely do a second printing because it's I think it's, it's, it's important. I know I know just from the people that have already gotten the book, they're just overjoyed with it. And uh, that makes me happy that to be able to have uh, played a role in that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for everything that you've done uh, in contributing to the Dark Shadows fandom and adding uh, to the Dark Shadows fandom. And uh, it's much appreciated, not only by myself, but by uh, all of the fans out there. So thank you for that. And here's to many more exciting things to come. Well, thank you, Daniel. And thank you for these podcasts. They're great to listen to. I've really enjoyed Mary O'Leary's podcast. So, I mean, this is, I mean, you're providing a service that's much needed. And I hope you continue to do what you're doing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Bob. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I am here in Collingwood with a legendary Dark Shadows fan, somebody who's been involved in the fandom for many years and has many wonderful stories to tell. Who am I speaking with right now? Oh, I don't know, but I'm Jimmy Hutchison. said I don't know who the hell she was talking about earlier, but, but, I, but I'm Jimmy, so here I am. Yes. <laughs> so, Jimmy, uh, tell us about your uh, adventures here uh, at Seaview uh, Terrace. How many years have you been coming to this uh, get-together? It's been about 10 years now that I've been coming, and um, I look forward to it every year. I mean, you know, as things always happen, eventually the curtain will come down, so enjoy it while you can. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, so, so, Jimmy, tell me, what's your favorite thing about coming to these uh, gatherings here? Well, it, it, you know, it's cool to just to be in Collinwood. I mean, good Lord. I mean, who would ever think when you're a kid, you know, watching this show, you know, that you'd ever actually be here and see it, let alone sleep in it or hang out in it, you know? It's really quite amazing, but honestly, it's the people. It's the friends I've made. Even the people I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that don't like me. Uh, no, we, we enjoy seeing each other. We hang out and we do little cookouts and we go out to eat and go places and it's just, it's wonderful. And the, you came all the way up here from Texas. Oh, right? oh yes, yes. I do that Every every year I've come, I've flown up, you know. Now you mentioned watching Dark Shadows as a, as a child. Like what what when did you first get into Dark Shadows? My mother knew I liked horror stuff, and and one day I, I want to say either it was right at the end of school time or maybe it was early summer. I can't remember, but it was sixty eight, and, and she said, "There's this show with a vampire on it." I hear, and we flipped over to the channel, and it was the credits rolling over that classic blue shot of the old house and i remember going oh we missed it but wow that looks cool well the next day we 
got it on time, and well, here I am. <laughs> yeah, so that was from 1968 on. It was somewhere right around, it was, Nicholas was around, uh, Eve was just starting to show up, Adam was around. My mother had to explain what a warlock was to me. I didn't understand it. I didn't quite, despite how often it was said, I didn't quite get the Adam Barnabas thing. She'd have to explain that to me. And then, then, then came Angelique as a vampire, and I was just like, oh, well, I'm in love all over again here. So. And you, you were just talking about Lara Parker just, just a moment ago. So yes, I, 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 had, I had texted her a picture of me out on the lawn, and uh, so she texted me back and said she, she loved that I'd let my beard go wide. <laughs> Jimmy has a great look going on right now. With yeah, it's the Heisenberg look. Kind of a Heisenberg gone Amish. It's it's very odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Jimmy, but, what's your what is your favorite uh, storyline from Dark Shadows? Second half of eighteen ninety seven. Although I will tell you, I really love nineteen ninety five. As short as it was, yes. it was so innovative to do a flash forward. I thought and. It's a little rushed as Dark Shadows kind of got there toward the end. It's a little little rushed, but the acting was good. There's a prime example is Clarice Blackburn. Yes. God, she was brilliant in that. Brilliant. In that. And it's just, you know, oh, it just kind of wasted her, I feel, sometimes. But, but, you know, but the second half of 1897, mainly because of a certain person named Count Batovi, did my, my rather innocent-looking magic hand, Mr. Haskins. Mm. Excellent choice. Uh, well, it's, yes, he's he's wonderful. Yeah. I had but one god, and his name is Patufi. I'm just like, oh, this this guy's eating the scenery. I can tell you, <laughs> good stuff. Wonderful. Mm. Is he your favorite character from the show, or you know, it's so cliche. I mean, to say Barnabas, but of course he is. He's complicated. He's you know all of that, and we all have these feelings about you know the same thing he kind of does and everything. But then there's you know. Grayson Hall's my champion. I mean, Julia Hoffman is just, I mean, you know, she's it. I would do anything for that man. That's true love. That really is. Then you feel sorry for Angelique, too. I mean, you know, all I wanted was some love. I did reach above my station, and I did kill your family and curse you. But, you know, I I wanted you. So, I mean, there's, there's so many characters to love in Dark Shadows. You really can't. Pinpoint. I love Count Patovi, but I, I also loved almost everything Thayer ever did. Yeah. Catherine had some wonderful, you know, yes. Josette and Ma- Maggie's a wonderful character. Um, you know, so it's I can't narrow that down, Are, honest. Do you have any thoughts on uh, this uh, sequel, the, the Dark Shadows reincarnation, if that comes to fruition? Uh, do you want to see that? Well, you can never redo the original. They've, they've tried, and it just really didn't turn out. That, you know, that and it was okay. The ninety one series, the ninety one ninety one series was okay. Um, I, you know, I just it was just it was finally getting to some original stuff finally, and then you know it got got canned. Uh, I thought the twenty oh four little pilot from WB that we what little we saw of it, it, it didn't strike me as being too terrible. Depth Shadows was not too good, but they chose to go a different route. So what can you do? I don't have a problem with the next generation of it, shall we say, if that's what they're going to do. I think that would be great. You can reference, you know, there's Barnabas's portrait, there's a picture of, you know, Julia Hoffman that used to be here, and you just have the younger people carry on. Obviously, we've seen the spooko goes on at Collinwood, no matter what time period, no matter who's there. So if they do it correctly and not try to make it too geared toward the teenagers yes. and sparkly vampires and Please, no. too much too much of a love thing you know if, if they could put some genuine you know really spooky stuff in it and do it well i think it could do really well i it's just one of those things that you hope for the best expect the worst and you know so we'll yeah. see what we get if, if it comes to fruition at all yeah i agree i think it would be nice to see mm-hmm. like a gothic Sort oh, of more sure. gothic yeah. presentation yeah um mm-hmm. any closing thoughts on uh just being here at Collinwood, is there anything you're looking forward to this weekend? Oh, I, there's places we go to eat that I enjoy. Uh, there's, you know, the, well, don't tell Bob, but I actually do like the raffles. I always complain about them because I spend <laughs> too much. But some sometimes I make out pretty good. Sometimes I don't. But this is part 
of it. It's just it's just just being here, and it's bittersweet because it probably will be the last time. But the, as certain people I know used to say, "In everything I've ever done, Jimmy the curtain comes down," and 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 and, and, and it will. So you know, but uh, I'm just looking forward to spending time with my friends and doing things and just spending time here. It's 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 a real privilege. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy. It was great talking with you. Thank you very much. You know, people are excited to meet the Dark Shadows actors, which, of course, I am excited to, if I get the opportunity to meet the Dark Shadows actors, but I'm just as excited to meet legendary figures in the Dark Shadows fandom whose names I have always seen over the years in the zines and um it's such a pleasure to be here with the wonderful and delightful Helen Samaras. Helen, thank you for sitting down with me for a few minutes to thank talk you. to me. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Um, are you having a fun time here? Always. Always. So, Helen, tell me, what is it that you love about Dark Shadows? You're looking at it. It's the fans. It's always been the fans. To me, Well, the first festivals, you want to see the actors. And after a while, they just become gravy. You make these relationships that are just, you know, unbelievable. You know, of all the people here, I know Guy the longest. I met him at my first festival, 1984. I was only two. He was three. <laughs> <laughs> you were great in the Jonathan Frid documentary. I really enjoyed seeing you in, in that. Um, is Jonathan Frid your favorite from the show? Or is, are there, uh, who's, who are your favorite, uh, let's say, characters from Dark Shadow? It's hard to say. I really don't associate the actors on the show with the people that became my friends. Mm -hmm. um, my my favorite of my friends would actually be Louis Edmonds. Mm -hmm. That man was an absolute doll. You know, Guy can attest to this too. You know, I was always afraid to invite him to my house because I never knew what he was going to say in front of my parents. Mm -hmm. But you know, that <laughs> that that man had a heart of gold. Yeah. You know. I could tell you stories about him that you really wouldn't believe, yeah. but nice man. But he would call me on the spur of the moment. Oh, Helen, I'm a little bit bored. Would you mind coming to my house tonight for dinner? And I'm saying, oh my God, it's rush hour traffic. It's going to take me two hours to get to you, an hour to get home, but only two hours to get to you. But for him, I would do it. And it was always a thrill because you just never knew what he was going to come out with. He was so unlike you know, the, yeah. the characters he portrayed on the show because when he would talk to you, talk like this and i said where's that booming voice that i know because my dear that's why they call it acting <laughs> wonderful and you were telling me you and guy are uh you know not too many fans have actually had the opportunity to meet donald briscoe and you had the chance to really hang out with him for like an hour and talk with him what was that like oh my god it seems like it's a million years ago but it's it's unforgettable um uh, we had another mutual friend that set it up he decided to to call don briscoe from the telephone booth of telephone and started talking with him for a while and set it up with us. Come on, let's go down to Memphis. Let's go, let's go visit Don. And, you know, we went, um, they arranged it. They came to our hotel. I came with his parents. His parents wanted to check us out to make sure that we were safe, that we weren't going to do anything to their son. They stayed in the back of the room for about five minutes and said, everything's good here. You know, we'll, we'll be back, you know, whenever. And, I think we drove this man nuts. You know, we, we were firing questions at him because we were so excited because we didn't know anything about him because no one, no one had the opportunity to see him, you know, after, after Dark Shadows. And he was so gracious and he was just such a sweet man. And he would sign Chris Jennings, you said, and you're... Oh, yeah. He wasn't the best correspondent, but I wasn't also that good at keeping in contact with him. But whenever he wrote to me... Mine would be uh, addressed to Helena Troy, and he would always sign his Chris Jennings. Oh, that's so that's so sweet. That's so awesome. Last question: As we know, Seaview Terrace is up for sale. Um, what is your hope for the future of of the Cary Mansion of Collinwood? Oh gosh, it's hard to say. You know, I just hope it's not knocked down. That's yeah. you know, that's that's that I'm afraid of because. Even if you don't put it with dark shadows, just the history in this house, you know, if, if you've gone through and you've looked at ceilings, you know, pieces of art that are all over the place, you wouldn't want to see anything happen to that. You know, and just, you know, for us, how exciting it was, you know, each one of us, you know, we, we were like, we're over that now, you know, and then, you know, been there, done that. But 
I see a new person and I just go back to my first time. You know, you know, I'll never forget that as long as I live. And I just hope it can stay that way, you know, from time immemorial. <laughs> Thank you so much, Helen. <laughs> All right, I'm here in Collinwood. The sun has set, and we all know what happens when the sun sets over Collinwood. The fans get together and hang out. I am so excited to be here with a legendary figure in the Dark Shadows fandom. Uh, his name is well known to many Dark Shadows fans. What is your name, sir? Um, I'm Guy Haynes. Guy Haynes. Uh, I remember watching the Dark Shadows festival panels and the full-length footage and just being transfixed uh, by these tapes that you would provide in the fanzines. And I want to thank you for that because uh, at the time I was not going to the festivals and that was kind of my way of experiencing the festivals kind of secondhand through your tapes. So thank you for doing that. Uh, did I, do, do you think I did some tapes for you or for somebody you knew, they were. I think they were for me. You know, the uh, that was in the days before YouTube. You know, now you YouTube, you, everybody can see, you know, the yeah. festivals. But uh, yeah. and I'm very lax at putting all the uh, festival history that I have on VHS uh, on YouTube. But I do intend to do it. But uh, yeah, I was um, kind of drafted into being one of the two official uh, Dark Shadows videographers. Uh, Dave Brown and I um, were the two. Uh, he would set up on the left side, and I would set up on the right. And we virtually videotaped every festival uh, until I went into nursing school, and then I missed a few. But um, uh, yeah, it was uh, it's a great pleasure to share the festivals. I like to think of myself more as a video historian, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I miss those days. Yeah, I, I I miss those days too. But this gathering here at uh, Seaview Terrace, the Cary Mansion, Collinwood, is uh, kind of that spirit is is there for sure. And thank you for having me here as well. Uh, you're one of the folks who puts this together, aren't you? Uh, yeah, um, we it's a group effort, but uh, we you know our fearless leader is Bob, but. Uh, Helen and I, Helen Samaras and I came here for many years at, we would always drive up after the East Coast Festival and uh, we would, uh, you know, we, we, we would come for the day at first, but then we started getting a hotel and coming here at night and sneaking around the grounds and touching the mansion and saying, it's real, it's there and never dreaming that someday we would be having parties here. Halloween parties. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. I videotape them, all the activities. Uh, I also try to decorate this huge edifice. <laughs> uh, we're in the process of that right now. The, the party's not going to start till next week, actually, the actual party. But, uh, you know, it's great to meet friends from all over the country, all over the world, actually. And uh, our mutual love of dark shadows is what brings us together. Yeah, you, you've you been working all day putting up these decorations. This looks, I mean, it's Collinwood festooned in Halloween decorations, paintings of the characters everywhere, photographs. I, it just looks unbelievable. So you did an awesome job. One, one idea that was mine is the 60s room yes. where um, I wanted to have a place during the, the, the whole weekend where people could get away from the party and watch Dark Shadows episodes. So in the 60s room, which we designed as a with black lights and black light posters, and uh, Helen had the idea that when we some of us ran home from school to watch Dark Shadows, our, our mothers would have Kool-Aid or Funny Face soft drinks for us, and uh, we have a table with, uh, with Funny Face uh, mugs on it. But uh, it's it's kind of um, a respite for people that want to get away from the party and watch Dark Shadows. And they go, uh, well, late into the night and start early in the morning. Bob and I were talking earlier. We were in the other room. And from that room, you could hear Louis Edmonds voice booming. Roger, <laughs> It was as if Roger Collins was having a conversation in the other room with Elizabeth. It was great. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Roger Collins because... 
that happened to me. Uh, one of the first parties, I I had dark shadows on downstairs, and I was upstairs doing something, and I I heard this voice, and it's Roger Collins storming around the house, and and uh, Louis was a great great guy. He was I really miss him. He was a wonderful actor and a wonderful friend. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about this house? Oh. Oh, well, uh, my favorite area it could is probably um, the small tower that you rarely see. It's towards a side of the house that uh, you rarely see a picture of. And that tower um, has a spiral staircase inside. And if you go up up to the top and out, you're, you walk out onto a balcony and uh it's a really nice place to sit when you first wake up in the morning and you see the sun is coming up in the east and you see the shadow of the mansion falling across the lawn. And it's, uh, I don't drink coffee, but it's a nice place to have your breakfast and drink your orange juice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guy. Thank you. I've been lurking. Hollywood, and I have encountered what may be a supernatural manifestation. Nope. It's Vivian. Hi, Vivian. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Wonderful. So how are you doing? Are you having a fun time? Yes, that's very much so. You said you went on the cliff walk earlier today. How, do, how was that? It was beautiful, sunny, nice and warm, clear sky. Did you see Aunt Josette perchance and say, hey, don't jump? <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> Shucks. Um, so um, this, these gatherings here at, at the house, I'm just really amazed. How, how many years have you been coming? I, I noticed your picture in some of the books I was flipping through. How many years have you been doing this? Um, since Halloween of 2014. So what brings you back? What is it about this that draws you to it? I enjoy the friendship with other Dark Shadows fans, and the house is just amazing. It's beautiful. I love the ocean as well, So, but I think the, the friendship with the other fans. Where are you from? Um, Cleveland, Tennessee. That's just outside of Chattanooga. Wow, awesome. So is there a favorite part of the house that you enjoy the most? I guess it would be the, uh, I think it's the angel room or what we call the dark shadow, uh, the 60s room now. Yeah, a uh, guy decorated with lots of 60s style paraphernalia black light posters it looks really cool and dark shadows is playing on a loop and there and earlier today i was upstairs in my room and i from far away i could hear the dark shadows theme and i said is this, am i really hearing that or is that just in my head am i is it just like has it become part of my psyche at this point where i'm just hearing the song uh, <laughs> so what's your what's your favorite um character in dark shadows angelique you have an awesome Angelique shirt. I was going to comment on that earlier. That is so cool. Her Angelique shirt rocks. It's great. So what what is it about Angelique that makes her your favorite character? Um, she is very misunderstood. She is an evil character, but she is uh, she's been wronged and so she's has a reason for what she does. Do you, do you feel that Barnabas did he bring it on himself in other words? Yeah, I think he did. They they both kind of are two sides of the same coin, I think, in many ways. Yeah, I think the way Laura Parker portrayed her, she portrayed her that way. But if you watch the 91 series, Lysette Anthony portrayed her. See, I don't think she portrayed her that way. See, I don't see uh, yeah. that betrayal as as being wrong, as, as that she didn't portray that. I agree. Yeah, she was much more uh, evil, as you say. I think more vindictive, uh, whereas... You can find some sympathy for Angelique, I think, especially as her character evolves as the show goes on, for sure. What are your thoughts on the 91 series, generally speaking? I liked it. Um, I It came on the year I graduated high school, mm -hmm. and I had seen some of the reruns of the original Dark Shadow series when I was eight years old with my grandmother. So I sort of remembered it because um, our local affiliate took it off the air. But I sort of remembered it, and I was excited to watch it. And I really liked it because I, I liked the whole feeling of it. It was a whole 80s type feeling. But, um, yeah, Angelique, I liked the Barnabas and the Vicky and all of that storyline. I really liked Ben Cross. But, um, like I said, Anthony, no, she was, I didn't, I was like, no, Angelique, you yeah. know, I didn't, 
yeah, I didn't like her because yeah. she she was very vindictive. Yeah. Had you been into the original Dark Shadows prior to the 91 series or did you get into it through the 91 series? No, uh, like I said, I was eight years old and watched it with my grandmother. Mm-hmm. And But our network t- uh, took it off the air. I guess that's all the shows they had mm-hmm. after a year. And then I do remember that they came out on videotape at some point. But they were rather expensive to buy, and I didn't want to get into doing that. I remember, like, record shops, they would, mm-hmm. video stores, they would have them for sale when I was older. But I didn't want to get into buying those in junior high, high school. So I didn't really see any more uh, till the 91 series that came on the Sci-Fi channel about that time. But I would get in on the middle of something. So I just picked up when I was about 30 when the DVDs came out, mm-hmm. really again. So, yeah. What did you think of uh, of the films, like uh, Angelique's and Night of Dark Shadows, but that's a very different version of, of Angelique. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I liked it. I didn't see the films until I saw the series on DVD, and then I, I found out that there were films. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when I found out about the festivals. I saw the advertisements. But um, I like the film, but I wish that they had n- it had not been cut. Yeah. And I would like to see it restored. Hopefully, uh, Darren Gross will be able to. He's I know he's been working on that for a very long time, passion project, and hopefully that will be released at some point. I hope, fingers crossed, that that happens. Definitely. Okay. Dare I ask? As since we're talking, Angelique, um, Eva Green, thoughts? Um, I it was the the film was different i didn't you know she was not quite as bad as i said anthony as far as the vindictiveness went but you you can't touch laura parker right now in the way that it was played definitely she she definitely much like fred is identified with barnabas laura parker will always be identified with angelique as sort of the archetype for angelique and david selby as quentin as well you know um it's in fact unlike you know the others he's the only one who's ever played that role so it'd be difficult to imagine somebody else playing him too you know definitely i think adrian paul was supposed to play yeah. him mm-hmm. if they had gone there in the 91 series yeah yeah that would have been interesting i i actually think he would have been a, a good I think choice he yeah. would have been yeah and in fact when depp was cast as barnabas i thought he would have i said he would have actually i think make a better quentin than a barnabas because he has that roguish yeah. charm yeah i yeah. think so yeah last question here thoughts on the future of Dark Shadows fandom uh, as a whole? Like, what what would you like to see happen with Dark Shadows fandom and just Dark Shadows in general in future years? Well, hopefully um, younger generations that continue to watch this. I I know we have younger people that, um, you know, we have some people that come here that are in their 30s Mm -hmm. um, and even not quite 30. And I know we have some teenagers that come with their parents. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, They'll continue to watch, and I think they're working on a new project um, that's going to pick up where uh, it left off for new generations. So hopefully new generations will you know, continue to watch it, and it'll just continue. Awesome, Vivian. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your time here re- revisiting Collinwood. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's a TV here, which I'm, it's kind of jarring because I never thought Colin would have had a TV from what I saw in the show, but there is a TV at Colin. It's a nice TV. The portrait of Josette looms behind us, and I am here with... Nina Ogle. Nina, thank you so much for sitting down with me to chat. How long have you been coming to these Collinwood gatherings, Nina? I have been fortunate enough to be, I was at the very first party, and other than Bob, I'm the only one who's been to every single one of the parties since. Wow. I have never missed one, ever. That's awesome. What brings you every every year to this? Oh. Well, I love this house more than anything. Um, I think it's just so amazing. Um, I enjoy, enjoy enjoy the people, too, but it's there's just something about this house i mean i can see people you know we can get together at other events and things but coming here i wouldn't miss a second of it what's your favorite part of the house is there a favorite room or a favorite place in the house that you like oh it's hard to pick i mean there are so many wonderful things in this house i 
don't think I can pick a favorite place because every time I come, I see something that I did not see the previous 50 times I've been here. Um, I love everything from the basement to the attic. I love the broom closets. <laughs> I love everything. I always told Bob, I said, I don't care what room I'm in. You can put me in the broom closet and I will be happy if I can be here. Um, I just can't pick up. I, I will have to say, I think one of the most kind of mind blowing parts of the house is the great hall with the, the floor that's, um, tiled, the inlaid tile and the, the grand staircase is just so amazing. But but I love every single inch of the house. It is a gorgeous house. I mean, it really is magnificent, and uh, it's really awe-inspiring. To, to look. I've seen the house several times from the outside. This is my first time actually inside the house, and I'm blown away by how it looks. And there are some things that are evocative of, of Cy Tomashoff's design, the doors and sort of the stained glass and things. There are definitely some elements, but it's and the immense. Panel. The and the wood, wood paneling, paneling, mm -hmm. the wood paneling yes. but it is an, an immense house with such beautiful, ornate architecture. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, this is going to be a, a strange question, but this is a strange podcast, and I'm a strange hostess. There have been uh, many uh, reports of paranormal activity uh, at this house. Has has anyone ever? Well, I see people raising their hands all around me. Oh, I, I really want to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually go around on this one and I want to hear for, from people. Have you had any experiences? I have of, not. I have know? not okay. had any sort of paranormal experience that uh, ever in my life okay. here or anywhere else. Okay. What's your, what's your favorite uh, storyline in Dark Shadows? Oh, I think when I was, I was, I'm an original fan, so I saw it back in the 60s. I didn't start watching it until the Liz Stoddard, um, Jason McGuire. And I would have to say maybe that's my favorite because it's what got me into the, into the show. Mm -hmm. My first episode was when Liz was going to throw herself from Widow's Hill. And that captured my attention. And so I became a a fan from there on. And then I loved, at the time, I loved every single storyline. I was totally, I lived, ate, breathed Dark Shadows as a teen. So at that time, I really didn't have a favorite storyline. I don't think, I did really enjoy the dollhouse, the Carrie. The Rose Cottage. Rose Cottage and yeah. Carrie and Tad. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that one at the time, but um, I'd say maybe those two storylines. But I was such a huge fan of Joan Bennett and then later Jonathan Frid. Of course, we all love Jonathan Frid and David Selby. And then I just never would have imagined that as a teen that I would not only meet those people and get to know them at the festivals, but then to get to stay in this house. I mean, if you would have told me as a teen that as an old lady, I would be here, I would never have believed it. <laughs> well, you're not an old lady, but that's awesome. I, and hopefully many more uh, opportunities will, will present themselves. Thank you so much, Thank Nina. You. Thank you. In light of the fact that all these hands shot up when I asked about paranormal activity at Collinwood, uh, I'm jumping back to, to Helen here. Uh, Helen, I, I think your hand was the first one I saw go up. So tell me about the strange ghostly goings on at Collinwood. I was just saying that almost every party, something has happened. And my ghost is playful. Thank God. Because if I saw anything, I'd be a ghost too. Because uh, yeah, I, I scare very, very easily. My first time, um, uh, it was during the day, I had realized my phone needed to be charged. And if you know me, I'm very habitual about certain things. It's not that I'm anal, but I put things in certain spots so that I know that if I look there, I'm going to find whatever it is that I'm looking for. So I needed to charge my phone. I went up to my room. I went to my suitcase where my charger should have been. And I open up the zipper and there's no charger in there. And I'm saying, that's not like me. I must have left it home. I said, but... Let me open my suitcase. So took the suitcase, put it on the bed, open the zippers on it, and you start, you know, just playing around. And I'm saying, it's not here. The only way you're going to be able to do this is take everything out. So I took the suitcase, I tipped everything out, and slowly started putting everything back into the suitcase. Went through everything. There was no charger. I said, hey, what am I going to do? You know, I got to call my office. I, you know, I cannot go without a phone. So um, I left the room, walking down the stairs, 
and I'm preoccupied. Run into a friend. She says, oh, what's, what's wrong? I said, I left my charge on. She says, came to the right person. I take everybody's used chargers. So someone's going to need to borrow one. Come and see if I have one that you can use. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I went, found the charger that works with my phone, and I said, yeah, I'll just need about an hour on it. She said, no, no, whatever. Take it back to your room. Do whatever you need to do with that. I go back to my room. There's my suitcase sitting in the corner, and on top of the suitcase is my charger. Weird. Wow. That was the, that was the first time. Another time, same room, because I've, I've had that room before. Uh, it was, that one was, that was a Halloween. This time it was Memorial Day. Uh, I was, uh, Nina was one of my roommates. Cheryl was one of the roommates. And I was leaving earlier because I had to get back for work. I went into the bathroom and I go to pick up my toiletries. So I pick up everything. I'm holding them in my arms and I stop and I'm talking. My friend Cheryl, and we're talking about whatever it was. And I said, you know, this is getting heavy. Let me go put it inside. So I walk into the next room. I put all the toiletries on the floor. I sat on the floor, get my flight bag, zip it open, go to turn around, and my toiletries aren't there. So now I'm saying to myself, I must have left it in the bathroom or I left it by Cheryl. So I walk out of the room and Cheryl goes, how many toiletries did you have? I said, you saw me with the toiletries? She goes, yeah, you had an armful. And I said, they're not inside. She says, what do you mean they're not inside? And I said, I walked inside, I put them on the floor, they're not there. I walked back into the bathroom and they were all back in the bathroom. Wow, that's so strange. Wow. Uh, another time, it was Memorial Day. Bob was calling out everybody's names for their T-shirts. And he, he got to, it was the joiners. They had gone to bed early. He says, Helen, would you do me a favor? Would you put these outside the room? Sure, what room are they in? Gives me the room number. Take the, their programs, their T-shirts. Go flying up the stairs. And I got a funny feeling as I rounded this corner. It got a little bit colder than normal. And I just felt like I wasn't alone. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. And I walked by their door and it just, you know, kind of freaked me out. Now I didn't know what to do with the t-shirts and the, the programs because the floor was, was a little bit dusty. I said, I don't want to put them there. And I'm thinking too long and I, all I want to do is get the hell out of there. So I put them on the doorknob, and I just like ran down the hall and came downstairs. As soon as I came downstairs, Bob says, hey, Helen, would you take these upstairs to Denise's room, which is the room next door? And I said, sure, no problem. We'll go upstairs. And this time I pretty much flung them because I got the exact same feeling that I was there. But it was every single time that, you know, that I was in there. And like I said, whoever is, I always said it was Mrs. Bradley. She was one of you know, one of the original people that were here, and she's always playful and she hides my things. Like you know, like I was saying, an, another time, uh, you know, I might be blonde, but I'm really not a space cadet. But you know, I, I'm I'm not the type to lose things. I usually know where everything is. And there was a couple of parties in a row that I would come home and I was missing something. Now I never had a room by myself. I was always with other people. You know, so we divided up the room, you know, my stuff is there, your stuff is, is over there. So my stuff would always be, you know, over there. So I'd load up the car. I've traveled my whole life. So I always know how to check a room when you're getting ready to leave. So I knew that there wasn't anything of mine left in the room. And then I would get home because I always had to leave ahead of everyone else because i elderly mother too, besides being home from my business. And I'd get a telephone call from one of my roommates, Helen, you forgot something, you know, we'll send it back with, you know, someone so that's going to Long Island. And it's like, how did that happen? And yeah, why, you know, why did this, you know, this disappear? And it, every single time, you know, bars of soap, um, clothes, but usually by the end of the trip, you know, they would, they would turn up again. It, when they did the, the Ghost Hunters show, they did a couple episodes here. They, I watched the first one. It was called Dark Shadows. Mm -hmm. And they actually, it was one of the episodes where there was actual stuff, that activity that, that happened. So it is pretty well known for well, that. The couple that I was telling you about where I, you know, I pretty much, you know, flung their, their you know, their, their shirts. When they were doing Ghost Hunters, they, they called me on the phone because I was telling them some of my, my stories. And there's more that I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm nervous with you in front of a microphone, as you can tell. So I'm not really remembering all of them. But I was talking with Michael. And he was, Michael told me he had an experience. Yeah. He he, 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 so, you, so you know the story, yeah. you know, on, on that where he heard a voice. Yeah. And, you know, he thought it was his wife. And now I need to come down yeah. here. And meanwhile, she's sitting in yeah. a chair. It's like, you know, who was that? I'm saying, no wonder I had that creepy yeah. feeling. Yeah. I never walked into that room after that. <laughs> it's appropriate that 
Collinwood is haunted. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Thank you, Helen. You're welcome. I saw another hand shoot up when I when I asked about strange activities here. Uh, so, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Uh, Mary Wasmer. Mary. So you've been coming to these gatherings for how long? Uh, came for the first time in 2012 on Halloween. So when I asked about strange experiences, what was the experience you had? Well, it was really creepy. <laughs> um, I had, um, I have a dog, dog, or this cane, and I was at the time I was needing to use the cane, so I had that one came, it was given to me as a Christmas present. So um, I brought it, and it was, my, like I said, it was my first uh, trip here. And with some, some other friends and everything, and we got to stay the very first time in, I believe it was the Carrie's room. And the activity came at night. Um, I was in bed, and all of a sudden I heard my cane going thump, 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 thump. And so then I thought, okay, well, I'm sitting here going like this. I'm going like this. Barnabas coming toward you. <laughs> just, getting, just getting closer into the bottom of the, you know, the bed and everything, about ready to cover my head and everything. And so I thought, and then the next thing I knew, I felt this presence on the bed. And I thought, well, maybe it was the lady that was sleeping in the bed with me and my friend that I was sleeping in the bed with. You know, I looked over and you know, she was sound asleep. And I said, okay, this isn't her. The next thing I knew, the covers went up over my head. And that was the last thing I know. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm not going to bed tonight. I don't think I'm going to stay up all night. Wow, that is pretty scary. But I haven't felt like a presence, like I said, like, you know, this last trip in, you know, in Fourth of July, didn't feel any presence and really back no, I don't know. 2018 um, didn't really feel too much, but before then, there was there was presence felt. Yeah. Well, and you you came back though, so oh, that's absolutely. It scary. You I, I just, oh, I just I just love this house. I think it's just absolutely great. And I said, you know, it's the only op- the opportunity came from Bob, you know, to with uh, friends and everything. And it was just, I mean, I was just floored when they said, "Oh yeah, you're invited to come out to have, to that to the house to." stay with us at the Halloween trip and I was like oh this is fantastic I lived in Missouri at the time so I I had you know flew out here so but I moved here in 2016 uh, because I found the love love with the place uh, Rhode Island itself besides you know here and you know my favorite scene you know of course is the crack the waves crashing on the shore and everything and it just is you know that this part of this house is just uh, you know just everything just is it's 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 too hard to explain sometimes, you know. But I mean, it's just just the fact that I had the opportunity in the first place to come, you know. And then my first, um, I guess, somewhere along the line, I got my uh, self tripped up as far as not knowing that it was going to be a Halloween costume party. And so I didn't have anything. So I ended up going to the uh, I think it was Rite Aid at the time. So I had a uh, bought a Barnabas cape. Of course, I had my cane, and then uh, my ex had had given me a um, a mask, and so it kind of like that, and then I put like the teeth with it and all that. So that kind of came became my first costume, you know. Oh, so great. yeah, the, co- the costume parties look really cool. Like Bob sent out the the themes for this year is going to be like a carnival slash circus mm-hmm. slash sideshow theme, and then a '60s yeah. theme. So that's do you have costumes ready to go for those? Or well, I do for my '60s. It was kind of hard. Uh, financially for me to get to the other part done, but I've, I'm going to probably go look at big myself up as a tiger or something like that because I've got you know a few things I can do as far as a tiger, but it's, it's going to be a little harder for me on that one. But thank you so much for sharing your Absolutely. memories and your thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> I have returned to Guy Haynes because he has something to say. Guy, I saw your hand also. It was amazing. It was like all these hands went up. What was your paranormal experience here at the Cary Mansion, Seaview Terrace, Collinwood? I've actually had three in the past 11 years. Um, the the most brief one, uh, I was right above us in... Um, Denise Carey uh, that Bob and I stay in their apartment and I was uh, taking uh, a bath and I was got out of the tub and was drying off and I heard a female voice say guy it sounded like they were right beside me and I I go what Uh, is there somebody out there no one was out there and to this day I don't know I'm thinking hearing the previous uh, stories here 
it's always it seems it's always a female but anyway um the other uh the second thing is i'm a, a night owl and i'm i'm a, a news junkie and uh, i would wait till everyone was in bed and i would be down here in this room where we're at now with the tv watching the news at 2 a.m and one night um several years ago i was down here and all of a sudden i heard a woman scream to my left which would have been over that way uh rather than it could have been outside but i i get the feeling it came from inside the house behind me and it kind of echoed off of the windows over there we're in what they call the solarium here in the house i didn't hear anything after that uh, a couple of days later we were talking we got to talking like we are now about um, those of us who have experienced un unex unexplained things i had i should i wanted to preface this by saying i'm a skeptic i always try to find the most logical explanation so i have no logical explanation at this point for what i'm telling you but several days after my experience of the scream uh we were talking and there was a there's a gentleman that lives here in the house he um year round and he heard us talking and and we we said have you had any experiences and he said yes i have now he didn't hear my story yet i hadn't told about hearing this scream and he said i was down here late at night one night and i heard a woman scream coming toward my left he said i got up and walked into the adjoining room and i was hit by something that felt like energy and i it just like something was going through my body and it, as a matter of fact the gentleman just walked through the room here <laughs> uh anyway i i said oh my gosh he heard a scream about the same time of the uh, early morning hours that I heard it in the same direction. So I have no explanation for that. Now, the third thing is, and I can show you this later, I uh, donated a television set for our parties. And every year I put it away, I cover it with plastic and, and uh, kind of uh, pillows and, and blankets so it doesn't get damaged. Uh, several years ago, we got it out and I looked and on the TV, there's this face. It's unmistakable. It's a. Fa it's still there. So that that they're, they're my three stories. Wow, that's why I did not expect this to turn into like a paranormal uh, episode of the podcast. But this is amazing. Well, thank you so much, guy. Yeah. The fun never stops at Collinwood, and neither does the terror. I have yet another tale of the unknown. Who am I speaking with? Marge Hicks. Marge, uh, I enjoyed chatting with you this evening, and uh, I also saw your hand go up. Uh, so, so tell me, what was it that you experienced at Collinwood? Well, I was sleeping in the room with five other women, and I have a DVD player. They snored unbelievably. I couldn't sleep all night long. It was horrible. <laughs> That's not, that does sound terrifying. But my earphones on, turn the volume up. I couldn't sleep. So I asked Bob, can I go downstairs and sleep in the angel room? So Matt got a cot and put it down there for me. So I was down there asleep, uh, watching my DVD player, I was watching Dark Shadows, and turned it off and went to sleep. And then something woke me up. I heard music. I heard an organ playing in the angel room, which used to be an organ room. So what? I got up out of bed, put my house coat on, came out of the angel room, walked down the hall to the great hallway there, and the music followed and went right out up the stairs and out the window. That's I wasn't so afraid eerie. of anything. Yeah. 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 No. How, how many years have you been coming here? Um, 2010, and I think I went on a cruise and I went to California, and I think all but three times. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's just so fascinating. It's amazing hearing all these different stories about this. And I wasn't expecting that we were going to turn it, talk about paranormal uh, experiences, but it definitely sounds like that's a recurring well, theme Mrs. here. Mrs. Bradley used to play the organ. Yeah. We played the organ, Mrs. Ms. Bradley. Mrs. Bradley, yeah. And that was the organ was wow. in the angel room. Wow, wow. So tell, tell me, Marge, uh, what, what was it that compelled you to watch Dark Shadows in the first place? Like, what was it? When did you start watching Dark Shadows? Um, I was 14, and I would watch General Hospital. Mm -hmm. 
And um, they came on and they said that there was going to be a gothic show coming on with, you know, up out of mansion. And it was um, Victorian. And it was like for a haunted mansion uh, ghost stories. Mm -hmm. So I waited and waited for it. And it came on after General Hospital. So um, I had just graduated from high school, and I have this in Bob's book. So, and I was out looking for a job, but I ran home from looking for a job to watch Dark Shadows. All right, well, thank you so much, Marge. That's a new experience with the organ. Yeah. I just wanted to say that um, Diana Malay was, I was very yes. good friends with her. Yes. Um, I spent the last 11 years visiting her, mm. and, um, we became good friends. Uh, we went to Egypt and we went to Romania and I took my granddaughter with us. And when we came home, that was October, we went to Romania. We saw the Dracula Castle. When we came home in February, my granddaughter was diagnosed with a brain tumor and also another person that went with us, Roger Keene, he was also diagnosed with cancer with a brain tumor. So I called Diana up and I let her know, you know, what was going on. And she said that she had had this premonition that everything was going to be all right, that my granddaughter was going to be okay, that I would just have to have faith, you know, and believe in it. And sure enough, um, when they operated on her, the tumor was benign. But then we came to find out that Rogers was a cancerous mm -hmm. and we lost him. It was several years later, he came out yeah, of yeah. so. I'm so sorry um, about Roger. Um, I'm yeah. glad your uh, granddaughter's okay. Yeah, and she's doing good. She's 26 mm -hmm. now. She was eight. And it was very good of you to, to continue to oh, visit no. Diana. Well, and the, you know. I had looked for her, but I didn't know what happened. And I wrote her son a letter, and I explained to him about, you know, Diana and I and that um, what she had told me. And I told him that I just wanted to show a little bit of kindness that was shown to me. So he sent me her address, and I visited her just to make sure that she was okay, not being hurt, and she needed everything that she had. So while she was in there, um, we used to watch movies, watch Dark Shadows. She would sing. Um, you know, I would do her hair. Just a lot of friendship. I miss her a lot. Thank you so much, March. Thank you. I, I'm just delighted and also terrified to be here with Count Patofi. Hi, Count Patofi. How are you? What sort of a strange contraption are you putting into my face, madam? It's from the future, dear Count. Ooh, well, perhaps Mr. Collins will take me with him there. Seventy years of peace from the gypsies. Count, Count Patofi, how come you never came? You, you were one of the iconic characters from the show, and you never we kept waiting for you to come back in, in the present day to cause more trouble. Why didn't you come back and trouble Quentin and the gang anymore? Because Eddie Steed couldn't find my damned glasses. Ah, that ex they were, uh, just so you know, they were outside the, uh, well, the, the, the cottage. I couldn't see the damn things, and oh. he couldn't find them. Oh. So. That, that explains it. Well, thank you, Count. Uh, I'd like to speak briefly here to, to return to Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Hutchinson. I spoke to him earlier, uh, Jimmy. So it's been a, a few hours have gone by since you got here from Texas. We went out to dinner. How are you finding the experience uh, thus far and seeing your, your uh, friends here again? I have friends here. Oh, yes, I do. Yes. I'm sorry. I've nodded off several times. Sorry. It was a long trip. It's a long and difficult journey to quote Barnabas. You know, it's you build these friendships over the years. And, you know, it really means something. This is like its own little family. And this is our house. This is our home. And you know, it's going to be sad if we don't get to come back. But things happen. But we'll, the friendships will endure. But that's What's so wonderful about this, who would ever think this one little program that was on and you run home from school and go, ooh, look, vampires, and ooh, that's cool. And then, you know, 50, 60 years later, here you are, and you're in the house, and you're with people that did the same thing. It's a wonderful thing. It really is. And we're all so lucky to not only just know each other, but to be here in the house, lucky enough to have ever experienced this at all. It's a wonderful thing. Really is. This time that's full of cinnamon. Seaview is for sale now. Collinwood is up for sale. Twenty nine and a half million dollars. Um, what would you like to see happen in the future? Uh, in a theoretical future, where the house is sold? I think it, 
me being the owner, but uh, I, don't, I don't have that kind of money, you know. Uh, uh, I have other things to spend that money on, too. I, I would like to see the house restored to, you know, at least something of its former glory, I think. Uh, it just needs a little work, touch-ups here and there, a few, you know, things. Lick of paint is the same, but, um, or perhaps a gallon or two. But uh, it would be nice if, um, you know, the... Um, the history of the house could be preserved, and part of that history being dark shadows. I'd love for it to be some sort of a, not exactly a bed and breakfast, but a a place that, you know, whether you were a fan or not, you could come and stay and get, uh, you know, a nice room, good meals, and just relax and enjoy yourself. And if you were fans of the show, it'd be that much more special. And, and if not, well, you know, you had a good time lovely mansion and that's something and the new owners could probably make bank on it but you know of course they'd, they'd have to but you know it's it's an expensive place that's the problem with the gilded age all that all that money's gone it's not the same anymore and that it's hard to maintain houses like this mm -hmm. but it's a it's a historical you know um place and it needs to be preserved and i hope it is there's a lot of fans that have never been here never had the opportunity they'd love to be here and yeah it'd be nice if they could do that at a reasonable price and you know things like that but uh, time will tell we can only hope i really want to thank bob jimmy helen guy vivian nina Mary and Marge for taking the time to talk with me and share their thoughts on the podcast. As cool as it was staying in the actual Collinwood, and believe me, it was, my favorite part was getting to hang out with all of these new friends uh, who I feel like I've known uh, just through the zines and online fandom over the years. I've read about them. So it was, it was really cool to actually get to sit down and hang out with them. It was just delightful. Uh, and while I've quietly been around the fandom since the mid 80s, you know, I wrote some fanfic back in the day, some articles for the fanzines. I went to a couple of festivals in the early 2000s. Um, I've been shy about really joining the party, so to speak. And I wish I'd been more actively uh, participating in these events and other things of that nature, like the festivals, more, much sooner than I have. So uh, thank you, Bob, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. As for the incredible book, Our Shadowed Past, uh, Bob tells me that he might set up a Gmail, uh, ourshadowedpast at gmail.com, where people can write to inquire. Uh, I'm not sure if you got around to doing that yet, but if not, uh, you can also check the Dark Shadows Facebook groups for more information because I know Bob posts over there about updates on the books. So uh, you might want to look there. And let's hope with Seaview being for sale, with Collinwood being for sale, let's hope that uh, whoever buys the house, if anyone buys the house, that they will continue to uh, restore it, uh, first of all, and also to continue to have a space for the Dark Shadows aspect of it. Uh, it's always going to be Collinwood to us, no matter what they do with it. And I, I really hope that they will, whatever they do with it, that they will maintain some Dark Shadows presence and allow for the fans to experience that place. I think Jimmy said it best, you know, there are so many fans out there who haven't had the chance to see this house, to be in this house, to see the outside of the house. Uh, it's there, it's real, and it's... It looks just like it did on TV. I mean, it's Collinwood. You, it's unmistakably, I can't describe the feeling you get when you look at that house uh, from that famous view that you would always see in the opening of every episode. It's, it's absolutely awe-inspiring. And to be inside the house is just mind-blowing uh, and seeing some of the echoes of what Sai Tomashov did uh, to use some of those elements for the show is really cool too. So let's hope for a lengthy future for Collinwood. Just a quick apology for the audio pops in this episode. Uh, I bought a brand new microphone. Uh, I've never used it before, and uh, this was my first attempt at doing an on-site series of interviews, and I should have bought a, a wind blocker for the for the microphone because there were a lot of pops when we were speaking, and I really do apologize for that. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna see if I can secure some kind of wind shield for that. So, sorry about that. And of course, have a happy Halloween. And as we leave Collinwood, Roger Collins has one thing to say. We'll be back. Have no doubt of that. Ah.
and for as long as they lived, the dark shadows never truly dissipated, for there will always be Terror at Collinwood. Terror at Collinwood is a Penny Dreadful production.